would also love to do the same as Harry did. <laughs> Harry, about the journey, brother. Salama kabisa usaje. Karibu na happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Jamani moderator za habari za jioni na wengine wote. Salama kabisa usaje. Karibu. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here today. So, Usaje, my suggestion is uh, at the top of the hour, you can take it away, uh, introduce Sahara Sparks, uh, the room in the rationale behind today's session. Um, uh, the other speaker that we have on the session, Yakwanza Ni Noel, will join us shortly, uh, but then we can comment if you see what is the mood. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, and according to my watch, it's now 7 p.m. sharp. Uh, I'm privileged to start. So without wasting any further time, as I appear there, my name is Usadie Mwambene. I work with Sahara Ventures. And today we are glad that uh, we got an opportunity to to work with uh, Laws 101 uh, in this session. <clears throat> Sasa kabla sijaendelea mbele allow me to to introduce a bit of a background of Sahara Ventures and particularly Sahara Sparks. Sahara Sparks is a platform owned by Sahara Ventures and this platform was formed specifically for the purpose of sparking conversation on various topics around innovation, technology, entrepreneurship uh, in in both Africa in local Tanzania, Africa and uh, at the world at large. This platform, this platform traces this platform traces back his history since uh, we started back in 2016 when we did our first event, and from there we have been conducting various events to date. And this week, from Monday, uh, we started our our 2021 events, which is Sahara Sparks 2021. And this year, we are glad that we have partnered with both. Um, we are we are glad that we've partnered with Breakthrough Attorneys and Laws One Hundred and One to have this uh, this session, uh, which is titled uh, "The Status of Legal Tech in Tanzania," and probably will be analyzing also other issues uh, with uh, dealing with IPs and related issues. So, <clears throat> as, as, a, as a brief background, this platform, Sahara Sparks, has been handling conversation in various topics. I remember we had discussions on innovation in the data age, we had discussions on block blockchain and AI. We had discussions on the fourth industrial revolution. We had discussion on angel investment and private equity. So all the emerging issues and the emerging technologies, we form discussions around them so that uh, we bring together <clears throat> ecosystem players and other stakeholders to analyze this, to analyze this uh, new, probably if it's a new technology, or to analyze the new technology and to share what is going around at the moment, so that we can we can both uh, uh, we can both uh, enhance these technologies and these innovations that that, that comes as as the technology goes uh, goes on. I remember the most interesting discussions we had uh, back 2018 was aimed at, at defining what is a startup. 
because uh, there, there there was a definition of a startup uh, at the at the global at the global context but there was no any definition of a startup in the Tanzanian context so uh, we back 2018 we hold a discussion and stakeholders wengi including startups te, both tech and non-tech and at the end of that discussion we we were able to come up with a proposed definition of what is a startup in Tanzanian context and we were glad that that discussion that year that that year during that during Sarah's facts of that year we partnered with uh, with the National Economic Empowerment Council <coughs> kama wada wetu tulishirikiana tukaweza kukusanya um, tech tech startups tech and non tech startups na wote kwa pamoja tukatoka na a common understanding of a definition of what is a startup but that conversation didn't end there because that that conversation was extended in the Sahara Sparks of of 2019 where where we had similar similar conversation on that area now out of that discussion of sahara sparks of 2019 we were we were now able to to write a paper we came up we came up with a paper and one of the informatives uh, one of the resolutions of that particular paper was to establish what we now have in place which is the tanzania as startup association tsa so we are we are glad that tsa was one of the outcomes of the conversation that 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 we are we are sparked or that we are we are conducted during sahara sparks for both 20 from 20, 2018 and 2019 so again as i said that this year we are glad to partner with breakthrough attorneys and laws Tanzanian Laws 101 to host similar conversation and today we'll be analyzing on the uh, on the status of illegal tech in Tanzania and what, and exactly to understand what it means in our context as well as intellectual property uh, and issues related uh, with intangible assets for the fate of the data uh, for the fate of, uh, of our country so <clears throat> On behalf of Sahara Ventures, I'm glad that to, I'm glad to say that today we'll be having some um, outstanding speakers, and I, I don't want to take much of your time, but rather to welcome you uh, to to welcome to welcome you all to this event. That uh, that, that I hope at the end of the day we will be able, Basi, to understand. <coughs> how can the legal fraternity work with the startup eco tech tech startup ecosystem to enhance now the adoption of the legal tech uh, in our in our local context eh? lengo hasa liwe ni kwamba the legal sector needs to work closely with tech tech ecosystem ili basi zile changamoto za kisheria ziweze kupata ufumbuzi wa kiteknolojia Having said so, uh, I will need to my moderator. It was a Kundera session yet. I'll chip in at a, at a later stage. Thank you so much. Um, I thank Sana Usadia for that uh, good uh, background and putting the perspective into the sessions that we're going to uh, hold today. Um, I will welcome now Harry as a uh, one of the people who's powered in this session, because I'm session alone, we're powered now. Sahara Sparks, from what you Breakthrough Attorneys, just to give us a brief on uh, who Breakthrough Attorneys and what they do, and then I will take over to just give a brief on uh, laws of Tanzania 101, and then we can kickstart the session. Uh, Harry Karibu. Uh, thank you, Annette, and um, hi everyone. Um, my name is Harry Mbiro, and I'm a partner at Breakthrough Attorneys. Um, we are really happy and excited to have been uh, uh, invited to cooperate and coordinate with uh, Sahara Sparks katika uh, mambo mbalimbali ya mwaka huu uh, regarding uh, these sessions uh, on legal tech. Um, we have, uh, uh, as a law firm, we practice mainly corporate commercial and uh, advisory of the investment sector and uh, the general commercial space in Tanzania. Now, um, when this opportunity came calling to us, 
Um, we agreed with uh, Sahara Sparks to uh, partner with regards to creating a simple survey with regards to legal tech and uh, of the legal sector and the players in that system, but also to partake in creating this um, uh, uh, online session uh, regarding legal tech as well as our intellectual property and uh, intangible assets that we are in right now. So without much uh, or further ado, I think that is us as Breakthrough Attorneys. We're happy to be here and we're happy to cooperate with Sarah Sparks and Laws of Tanzania 101. Back to you, Annette. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Harry, for that and for being brief. Uh, so just briefly, Laws of Tanzania 101 is a club and bio, uh, eco co-founded by myself, Hafsa and Harry. And the purpose of this uh, club is basically to dissect the different laws uh, and regulations and policies that did not affect uh, and uh, usually we hold our sessions on Tuesdays uh, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. But today is a special, uh, very special session that we decided to hold uh, on the on, on a Wednesday, and we will be discussing uh, legal tech. Uh, so if you are keen on understand, on partaking on other future sessions, please just uh, click on the greenhouse uh, next to the name of the room, follow the club, and uh unapata notifications when you open our rooms, and also feel free to follow us on uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram using the name Laws of Tanzania 101. So uh, going directly to the case of the day, uh, for the last 10 minutes, the word legal tech has been thrown around a lot. Uh, so maybe just to let everyone know the modality, session the first session to Taungelea status here, legal tech in Tanzania, and the contributors will be Harry and Noel, who are both on stage. And this will run Paka Samoja Nanusu, where we will move to discuss intangible assets and IP issues. And this session uh, will be moderated by Hafsa, and the contributors will be Asha, Stefania, Pamoja, and Nema. Lakini we will also have other contributors on standby, and on Sunday, uh, Namugomba, and Hassan Tino Rajabus. Uh, any questions that you might have during the course of the sessions, please, if I maswali, tutauliza mwisho kabisa, there will be room for people in the audience to jump on stage and ask your questions or share your contributions. So um, straight to you, Harry, uh, legal tech, uh, what, what does it mean to Kisema legal tech? Uh, just give us an overview to set the pace for the room. Uh, thank, thank you, Annette. And, uh... Um, in general, when we speak uh, about legal technology or simply legal tech, uh, what we mean is a scientific way or method uh, or solutions that are catered and uh, to be used in the legal industry to simplify provision of legal services and support in the legal processes. So anything that is actually scientific and, and uh, codified in a certain way uh, to simplify utoaji wa huduma za sheria au msaada au services in general, then inakuwa ni legal tech. Kwa ufupi tu, it's geared towards ensuring effectiveness in the legal processes and enhancing accessibility to legal services. Um, as we move further forward, tutatua mifano ni namda gani kwa mfano legal services accessibility can be affected very much with uh, legal tech. Yeah. Uh, Santa Harry, uh, just in, by definition, it, it feels come like a Tanzania, but uh, it's not an area that we have uh, strongly explored. So it would be interesting to know what's happening in that space. Lakini, uh, what are the global trends around legal uh, technologies? What are they doing? Where, where is the trend going? Uh, where we can borrow from what's already happening out there? Um, Okay, um, w w when we look at the global trends in the uh, legal tech area, um, you can see various things, and I have several that I, I, I can pinpoint uh, quickly. Um, the number one is the uh, age-old uh, cliche statement that we are saying that is going digital. So this is the number one global trend, and it's ongoing because at the end of the day, it cannot end in a, uh, uh, on a single day. Sasa, 
everyone um, has been using this term going digital so here you uh, it's implied that uh, you become easily re discoverable and reachable in the digital tools things like uh, google search engine social media social platforms um, websites um, let's say what's up for business so um, this is the number one trend that uh, uh, legal technologies need to address and, and, and they are used as an idea of how you can be uh, you can use that so most of the businesses most of the firms that are here uh, lawyers whatnot have businesses that are uh, featured online Instagram pages so at the end of the day it also become a legal technology because it assists in the uh, accessibility of legal services and whatnot so clients and prospective clients are more likely to basically uh, do a research or access you newsletters ask a question whatnot uh, on this aspect before actually needing to meet you physically so going digital that's number one the second global trend that I look at and I see that is very much uh, growing is the use of artificial intelligence. Now here what we are talking about is the introduction of uh, systems, computer systems uh, to complement uh, normal uh, legal tasks uh, to, and uh, to assist in reducing the, 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 uh, the, task bad, uh, the burden of tasks on, on a person and uh, to help them focus on specialized works. Um, an, an example of this is the automation of uh, systems and, uh, um, and other matters in terms of uh, maybe administrative work or even in the actual legal work. The, the biggest example that I may give on this aspect, uh, or the simplest, is on issues like um, uh, contract review. This is the most common uh, automated system that uses artificial intelligence to do con review of contract. The accuracy is said to be better uh, than uh, the, human the human being's mind. And uh, we all know that our minds get tired. We, 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 we are affected by emotions or the ongoing things around us. But a machine or a computer doesn't feel that. So um, this has been ongoing. Uh, for example, contract review, of course, these are less uh, heard of in, the, in our part of the world. Nonetheless, they are ongoing out there. The other trend is modernized communication. Sorry, I, 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 there was a call coming in. Um, I, uh, I think I was on modernized communication, is that right? Yes, yes, Papa. Yes, yes. So um, the, the other trend is on modernized communication, whereby um, you actually simplify the way you communicate, meeting clients. Um, and this one cut across all, all other sectors, but also these are the biggest trends. And this is where lawyers have been asking uh, ev everywhere, can you do uh, a deposition, which is like uh, a discovery or interrog interrogation of, of, uh, of a client from another space? Uh, um, can you feel it? How do you ex uh, review documentation from there? But you see more and more uh, these communication tools are increasingly uh, getting uh, closer and closer to replace the 100% human touch through uh, their development and, uh, and changes. So you, see, you come to tools like Zoom, like uh, Google Meetings, like GoToMeetings. So all these things assist in 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 a, uh, in the production of legal services uh you now do not need to be e exactly where your lawyer is and that will assist uh, more and more accessibility to legal services as some of the speakers that i believe are here are going to come and explain how some of their systems have uh, helped in bridging the gap between them and the people that they're servicing and uh, are assisting in terms of legal services um, another global trend uh, uh, here is, uh, uh, I would say, mobile applications. 
Now, these also do give legal services. Some of the speakers, I believe, also have this and will also share with us some uh, this. So more and more uh, legal centers, legal law firms uh, are using uh, mobile applications to assist in them in giving legal services, in bridg uh, bridging their products, but also to sort of assist clients to communicate better with them. Um, another legal tech uh, trend that is growing is uh, cloud-based database i mean where do you um, store your items uh, where do you store your documentation i mean how do you share a file of one gigabyte uh, from one client to the lawyer that wants to review them you cannot attach all these documents in an email the, the email uh, attached attachment si volume size is very low so how do you i uh, mean uh, help and make this but at the end of the day apart from the size where do you have a, a one-stop center that everybody can access safely without certain uh, risks but also looking into assisting and uh, storage for for quite some time so this is also another trend and um, more and more law firms and legal service providers across the world are moving most of their data in cloud-based systems to assist them across the board to access but also to secure them from no more challenges that may face uh, physical storage or, or, or databases um, uh, um, one thing uh, that such systems would have is also to create uh, a, a firewalls or accessibility levels that can make sure that only required services or eyes can access and have their hands on these documents. Um, the other thing on, with regards to cloud-based database. Sorry, Harry, uh, just for the essence of time, I would like to cut you short. Uh, and then jump on to Noel, and then we can get uh, time to circle back on the other trends, uh, if that's okay. Uh, well, that's okay, but I just wanted to, to add one quickly, just a minute. Um, it's e-execution tools, and these are just stamps and signatures that are there, and these also assist to clarify and to approve documentation, whatnot, uh, even when somebody is not there. And these assist in the delivery of justice quickly, rather than waiting for someone to be there to travel back and sign. So that was the last one that I wanted to mention. Thank you. Uh, Sante Sana, Harry. So, um, Noel, I would just like to, to put you on the spot now that Harry, I'm to put the global trends and what is happening uh, globally, uh, things around going digital, use of uh, AI, modernized comms, uh, mobile applications that are now more and more being prevalent along the legal fraternity, cloud-based database, from modern IEO, e-execution tools. Now, if we bring it down to the local level, uh, we need to compare the practical cases of adoption of legal tech as far as Tanzania is uh, concerned. Um, uh, Santa Sana and it. Um, and Noel, please answer for could you introduce because we didn't get time to introduce yourself earlier. Okay, uh, my name is Noel Shio. I'm a High Court advocate, as the picture uh, says in the bio. But I, I, I have a partner at CBS Law Offices and a country manager at ITM Tanzania Limited. I've been in practice for almost nine years now, and I think I have a few things to add to this topic since I'm also a, a, a founder of one of uh, legal tech startups in Tanzania. And I guess that's, that's, that's why I'm, I'm here, and I think I have something to say. And I hope I'll be able to contribute um, to do this uh, topic some justice, given the time that is allotted to me. Yeah. Um, so straight to, 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 to your answer uh, to, to your questions, Annette. Basically, I'm just complimenting on what Harry has just said. Uh, he said a lot, basically covered everything. But speaking uh, on a Tanzanian perspective, um, so far we've seen a lot of innovations here and there that uh, try and address some of the challenges that most of uh, legal professionals or the legal service sector as, a, as an industry are facing. Sorry. Sorry. If I may speak, uh, Noel, unke raise your voice a little bit. Nakuskia kuambali sana. Okay, okay. Oh, kama umeva uh, headphone unaiso kazi toa. Sa, nilikuwa kwenye public domain kidogo hapa inapata changamoto unge kwa sauti. No worries, I can manage. I hope I can, I can be heard now. Yes. 
etc. So I was saying, um, I'm just trying to take whatever that Harry has said from a global trend to what is actually happening on the ground in Tanzania. Um, um, in terms of adoption of legal technology, we've seen uh, a major um, a change of heart, or rather an, an, an amendment, by, which was done to our civil procedure code in 2019, if 20, not 2018, if I'm not mistaken, to allow, first of all, uh, just electronic uh, submission of uh, filing of cases online and admitting of electronic evidences and such things, so amendment to the Court of Appeal rules as well. All these things are geared towards, of course, adopting to the new no to the new normal. Um, we, were, we, we were hit uh, badly by COVID, where we, movement was restricted and all that thing. As the say goes, necessity is the mother of all, so the fraternity had to bas basically adopt and allow for such uh, movements, but on a on a private sector um, um, perspective, we've seen a lot of, uh, especially mobile app, uh, mobile applications that seeks to basically have hailing services where we can connect with lawyers from wherever you are and have access to justice. Because the end goal here is to basically access uh, uh, justice remotely because we know most of the lawyers or legal professionals or services are centered towards the big cities here in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, Mwaza, Arusha, and if you go to some of the remote areas, you don't have it. But another challenge is the penetration of their mobile phone or rather internet and, and, and then the application aspect of it, which to me still needs to be solved or addressed because most of the the, 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 the target that we're trying to help uh, solve the problems do not have access to, to such uh, mobile applications or rather cannot afford. We've seen recently the, the, the move by, by um, legal service facility to come up with an app, I think it's called Haki Kiganjani or something of that sort. I'm also seeing Neema in the stage here. She's one of the founders of Shira Kiganjani. So we're seeing some movement towards addressing some of the challenges that faces legal fraternity. Um, but uh, to, to say, uh, to speak more on the modes as, as to, to, to the legal technology, as apart from what uh, technology has been applied that Harry mentioned, machine learning, blockchain and, and cloud-based solutions, I will speak on issues like, uh, we, which basically are so, some sort of opportunities for the legal fraternity to, to address like document automat automation, the e-discovery aspect, the software as a service legal. We, we, we've seen now courts going virtual where you can actually have a session online where in comfort of your office and, and all these sort of things. But of course, we've seen some elements of online legal training. You've seen CTS is uh, going on Zoom and such other things. But I guess the other opportunity or adoption of mode should also be on the smart contracts aspect. And and, and, and this was because at the end of the, the, the end goal is to make sure legal services are delivered in the most efficient manner possible and in a cost effective manner. So the end goal should be to, to cut down on the operation cost to ensure that there is an affordability on the end user or the person that we seek to serve. But also there is visibility to those legal service practitioners for example we all know how rigid our systems are in tanzania once you come out of law school you want to start your own firm you you, you don't have that capital you don't have the social capital to go in and afford lunch uh, uh meetings with clients so have a big boardroom so if we allow technology to take shape then every person will have an equal opportunity to at least fight um, um just the other day i was reading um a report on business week about how uh, a robot lawyers have been able to save 50,000 man hours of, of, of a normal lawyer will put in to solve a, a contract or rather to review certain contracts in labor. So this, these are some of the impacts that we see that uh, legal tech might have in the near future. But in a Tanzania perspective, we are still, of course, running very low. And the challenges could be many. First of all, is understanding the impact of what legal technology may mean to us because we have elements of both regulation technology, legal tech, and then we have insurance tech and all these other things that legal services are trying to, 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 to legal tech will actually be able to solve if given an opportunity and an enabling environment in which to, to thrive. Um, um, I think the other challenge or rather um, 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 obstacle for that, from a Tanzania perspective is to, on the regulatory rigidity, we see that our regulations, of course, 
apart from the ones that have just recently changed, we still see even from a, from a bar perspective, from the TLS uh, perspective, it is still very slow when it comes to adopting to new technology and accepting changes that are brought up by technologies. I would not like to repeat a practical case study in which I and my company took a solution to TLS that was turned down only for them to do something which for us was less of, of what we had uh, brought to them. Um, um, again, uh, concern has been on the data protection and, and the privacy issues, which all uh, poses a big question on cybersecurity because of sharing some of the sensitive information. Because traditionally lawyers are trained rather to solve very bespoke uh, services. So when you put that solution in a technology in the coding way in which maybe um, a, a smart contract will try to solve by, let's say, an NDA that is you find online by agreeing to uh, accept terms and conditions or a confidentiality clause or a purchasing order that you basically go online buy it buy an online item or anything of that sort. so th those are few um, 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 elements of, of, of legal tech or rather smart contracting that is being ported into legal tech and I think with time um, there is an organic growth of, of the legal tech in Tanzania and I know there is still a big opportunity for it to grow so uh, I think I'll end there until until further questions and I hope I've been able to, to ask you to answer your question yes very much so noel thank you very much uh you've painted a good picture on uh, where we are uh, locally as far as adoption is concerned but also you went ahead and talked about you know the different obstacles and op opportunities surrounding legal tech uh, and just before we hand over the session to to the to the next uh uh, discussion point which will be on intangible assets and ip issues i just wanted you know either yourself uh noel or harry uh to just uh in, in a very summary way tell us you know what does the government need to do more in, in adopting legal tech and sort of what is the next phase of uh, legal tech in tanzania because obviously uh, based on what you two have shared we we, it, we, we can all agree that uh, legal tech is very essential as far as prop, uh, propelling access to uh Legal services, but then the challenge remains on how we ensure data protection and those uh, th uh, such uh, such things. So, what does the government need to do uh, in order for us to go to the next phase of legal tech? Um, thank you, Annette. If you allow me an opportunity to pass this question to a friend that I know is in the best position to re to respond to this, please, uh, your permission okay. is sought. <laughs> Yes, Hassan Tino, please, if you may respond to that, if you're if you're online. Okay, Hassan Karibu, then uh, Harry, I saw you uh, flashing. Mm -hmm. Um, habari za jioni wote. Uh, Nimelisikia swali nzuri sana. Uh, Mimi nitaka niseme tu labda uh, jinsi ninavyolitazama au jinsi ambavyo labda tumekuwa tuna, tunafanya kazi tunajiguide kwamba um, legal technology uh, in addition to all the facets that are built around facilitating the provision of legal services so from the service provider side all the convenience ambayo mnaweza um, kuwa unamjengea mteja or the user um, there's another side to it that um, uh, based on uh, things like automation that uh, that is coming on uh, for many many types of business transactions and uh, there are new types of um, avenues that we'll have to sh to shoot out for instance um, I recall a few months ago in a discussion room in a clubhouse and it, it was around somebody was setting up um, an automated uh, escrow service so that is something I'm better it's a serious facility facilitate labda is or dispute resolution mechanisms ambazo zinakuwa digitized they will rely on things like smart contracts that execute automatically labda wale wanao wanao kinzana kwenye hiyo dispute resolution wana wana make certain deposits to the registry and then you know the when when the code is executed um labda arbitral awards or whatever zinakuwa transferred things like that we'll see as they evolve uh, from a mechanistic standpoint, I'm very particularly at um, at 
either one side uh, yeah providers ama ama the market au regulator labda on another side kwa kabla sijaenda kwenye serikali mimi nadhani uh, the, the first thing ni kuona hiyo kwamba kutakuwa na organic growth ya namna hiyo that's very much needs based as a lot of uh, things like e-commerce um uh, zinapoendelea uh, zina, zinaleta mahitaji ya yeah, ya yeah, a lot of legal tech um, to 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 come in, in in the sense that uh at a, at a documentation uh many of these terms and conditions labda what things like e discovery na nini zinakuja kutumika kwa sababu the doc, the documents are quite voluminous na na na, na costly in terms of the man hours and things like that kwa kuna kwa na hiyo natural evolution lakini to stimulate i think we also need to tailor solutions ambazo zitakwenda specific um, uh, kwenye matatizo ambayo tuko tuko nayo sisi hapa kwa hiyo things like hizo limitations alizo uh, taja uh, noel speaking previously kwamba kuna limitations uh, the accessibility uh, whether it be geography number of practicing advocates or ile, the uneven distribution ambao wengi wako centered kwenye wale service providers uh, at least private private practitioners ambao wako kwenye certain uh, urban centers ama kwenye economic centers kubwa ambazo zinakuwa zina hiyo ziko lucrative lakini like Tanzania there is uh, last we check i think there are 2 million legal issues or something like that pa, pa, uh, kwa mwaka uh, sasa uh, hao watu wako distributed uh, asymmetric asymmetrically uh, relative to wale mawakili walipo the service providers kwa hiyo tunaona kwamba uh, technology then has to arise up katikati to create uh, these multi-sided solutions ambazo zitaweza kuwa bridge na kuwaleta waweze kuzungumza waweze ku exchange documents securely lakini um much further unapozungumzia anet kwamba what is the future uh, nadhani hii labda kidogo to be interesting for the advocates in the room um kwamba sasa hivi when you think, think about things like uh, document submission uh, the engineers in the room will understand the technology kama gpt3 ambayo these are na- natural language processing uh, uh, forms of uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning ambazo zinaweza kuandika text sasa what we know about the legal fraternity is that everything is quite documented and recorded kwa hiyo ikianza ile mashine kasoma judgments labda za miaka 500 iliyopita kwenye certain issues labda za probates and nini it, it, it can extensively uh, write submissions ambazo zitakuwa much better than some of the best researching uh, so, uh, practitioners umeona kwa vitu kama hivyo kwa kutakuwa na certain areas ambazo currently zinakuwa ziko left exclusively to the mind of the of the of the uh, adjudicator or to the mind of the <coughs> of the service provider ambazo zote zitajikuta kwamba zinaingiliwa na hizi technology uh, au zina of course in a form of aid sio kwamba inakuja kuwa replace lakini ultimately uh, unaona kabisa kutoka kwenye document automation ya hizi mikataba na nini tunaenda sasa kwenye hizi uh, natural language processing uh, technologies zitakuja kubadilisha sana how um, what an actual lawyer does because they'll be able to start kufanya they can talk to the client they can understand the problems uh, it can review everything ever written about it alafu ikaja na something uh, ikaja na response it can do the legal opinions na hivi vitu vingine vyote that are currently require human uh, not intervention but actually human uh, execution uh, ndio wanafanya kwa hiyo those are the type of areas that we'll see uh, maybe to changing the next 5 years onwards uko lakini initially and particularly kwa context yetu sisi hapa Tanzania tunategemea zaidi kuona um, uh, solutions ambazo zitaenda kwenye matatizo ya kupaka watu wapate information so that they know their rights and then to have more uh, interactive uh, frameworks in place ambazo zitaruhusu sasa kufanya mass delivery uh, ya ya hiyo uh, legal services na kuimprove access to justice uh, asante uh, Sante sana Hassan well put well clarified uh, uh, very valid uh, contribution uh, we've run a little bit over time lakini nadhani it was uh, very worth it uh, Harry I saw you flashing before nikukaribisha uh, uweze kuchangia before uh, I hand over to Hassan thank you um, I just wanted to pinpoint specific areas that I can uh, yeah, 
uh, point out where the government uh, has been adopting legal technologies and what we can do. Um, uh, number one, uh, Noel has spoken very well about the judicial uh, system, the JSDS, uh, that the cases can now be filed and even conducted online. Um, we have been having this system on uh, for, for for several years now, but it's still, um, like Noel put correctly, uh, growing organically through uh, various uh, stages and uh, court hierarchy. Now, I can commend the government as well for adopting and implementing system elsewhere as well. Um, number one is um, on the procurement system that is online the, all government tenders are is called, uh, is uh, are being uh, advertised online people that are uh, uh, handling applying looking for documentation that are listed are found online so if you want to apply for government tenders you can see that system that is is very clear and and working that is a legal system because it operates under the purview of the uh, of the Public Procurement Act. Um, also, business registration, it has all gone online now. You apply, you change company documents, you file documents, you file uh, register companies through the online. The tax system now is online, returns, whatnot is online. Um, application for work permits through the Labor Commissioner's Office and uh, residence permit under the immigration, now done online. So in terms of what the government has done, um, gradually we have seen that the government is adopting e-governance system that uh, is a mirror of legal technology because legal services are being provided under uh, the computerized system as we go. So um, in the next five years, truly, we are going to see much more strides being, uh, having been done. So thank you, uh, Annette, for that. Thank you, Sana Harry, Noel, and Hassan. Uh, for contributing on the first uh, session of uh, today's uh, session, where we just wanted uh, to understand the, you know, the status of legal tech, some but kama Tanzania to koapi, but then also we got to understand globally uh, what is happening uh, on that uh, landscape. And obviously, uh, a lot of strides have been made. Uh, there is a uh, room for growth uh, and expansion. Like, I guess this is a call for, you know, the legal uh, practic practitioners in the room. But, you know, we need to do more to ensure that to not expand this access to legal services, especially to those who are underserved uh, using uh, the help of technology and whatnot. So uh, without much uh, further ado, I will hand over to Hafsa, who will take on now the session where we'll be discussing intangible assets and IP issues. Uh, uh, Thank you, AK, Annette. Uh, that was a superb moderation and the speakers of the first session and also our attendees who have been here ever since we started this room. Um, so uh, we are moving to the second session and the second session will discuss about intangible assets and IP system as a tool of... Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, We'll discuss about intangible assets and IP system as a tool to protect creativity and innovation. Uh, so I'll start with Asha. Okay, I can't see Asha. Okay, so I, 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 Asha was in the audience. Okay, okay. She's uh, Asha, can you mute your mic a little mic bit? A little bit? Okay, um, Asha, can you guys hear me? I'm getting red flags. Well, we can yes, hear you. Oh, okay, okay. So now I'll welcome Asha. She will introduce herself and then we can kickstart from there. Asha Karibu. Asha, if you're speaking, you're speaking on mute. Can you unmute your mic and then speak? speak. Okay, good. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, good evening. My name is good evening. Asha. I'm a partner at Breakthrough Attorneys, uh, specialized in corporate uh, law practice. 
and uh, I'm mostly uh, practicing with regards to the intellectual property as well as corporate restructuring, um, corporate financing, as well as uh, uh, as well as liquidation and insolvency matters. Thank you so much for the uh, invite, Hasta, and for everyone. Uh, thank you to Asha for being here and volunteer the, the knowledge and the expertise in, in this uh, area. So without further ado, I'll start by asking you, can you please explain, we are talking about intangible assets, but majority of people here, I'm sure, if they are not uh, dealing in that particular area, it's very hard for them to know what is intangible asset. Most of us are used to that tangible assets when you see a house, you can touch it, you can feel it, that's a house. But as far as intangible asset is concerned, it's uh, a bit uncommon to other people. So can you please uh, explain about it in relation to our topic today? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Hafsa. Uh, before uh, expounding on what are intangible assets in tech products uh, and services, I think I should explain briefly with regards to what intangible assets mean as a general term. Uh, intangible assets are non-physical, refers to non-physical assets that have a monetary value since they represent potential revenue. Uh, like uh, explained, uh, physical assets, you, you can have a car, you can have a house, you can have uh, a table, you can have a watch, those are physical assets. But when it comes to intangible assets, it means that the assets which cannot be touched, they, can, they are not physical, you cannot see them, they are not visible, but uh, they are in the form of a right that you, you can protect your intangible asset by, by way of uh, patents or copyrights, a trademark, industrial design, utility model, or trade secrets. So when it comes to intangible assets, uh, when it comes to technology-related intangible assets, uh, these are broadly defined as intangible assets that uh, create proprietary knowledge, knowledge and processes. So this proprietary knowledge can or process may be uh, protected by way of trademark or copyrights or uh, patents. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, Asha. Uh, so in a nutshell, can you also help us understand uh, what's the difference between inversion, innovation, in IP system, as far as IP is concerned, because that is what our topic is going to be based on, and would like for our audience to also um, understand what is. Thank. Okay, thank you, Hafsa. Uh, invention, invention refers to um, the act of creating, designing, or recovering a device, method, or process that has not existed before. So in finer terms, uh, it is a new scientific idea generated through research and experimentation that turns into a tangible uh, object. So for an invention to be uh, qualified as an invention, it has to be new. It, it is not obvious. It shouldn't be uh, already existing in the public. So it can be a new process of producing a product, or it may be in a form of an improvement upon a product or a new product. Uh, generally so basically the invention is coming up with a, a fresh idea and how it works in theory so on the other hand when it comes to innovation um, is an act of making of making changes to the existing product or the process by introducing new ways or ideas so innovation is all about practical implementation of the new idea so you might be you might invent something but you might not even know how to put it in practice in real life but so when where in, this is where innovation comes in so uh, as we are all aware that uh, uh, nothing is permanent in this world neither products nor technology so as day by day uh, improvements uh, are made on updates are made in technology or leading to new inventions and in innovations in the every sphere of life so at first these two terms, invention and uh, innovation, may seem uh, similar, but you'll find that there's a fine line of difference between invention and innovation that lies in their connotation. So while invention is all about creating or designing something, innovation is the process of turning or a creative idea into reality. Okay, that uh, is super helpful. So inversion is 
uh, the new idea or the new creation, something that that uh, is not existing or hasn't been existing before. While uh, innovation is uh, practical imp implementation of an idea. Okay, yeah. so moving forward. Okay, thank you. So moving forward in the process of invasion, yeah. Let us say you you have discovered something. You 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 want to create it. You want to uh, to put it in the face of the world. Uh, what are the most important criteria that an inventor should be keen on in order to protect that invasion? Let us say maybe you have discovered. A new ways of um, okay. Sorry, I will uh, give an example of not so legal. Let us say maybe in Dar es Salaam we are facing a lot of dust in the street. So you have discovered a way that uh, maybe there is a system you can uh, put the drones maybe and then they will tell you where the dust are located instead of cars going there in the street and all that. How? Am I going to protect that invasion? Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Um, so, in order to protect uh, an invention, so an inventor should put in mind three basic things, and one of uh, one of them is novelty. So this means that uh, in order they have made an invention, so they have to make sure to get protection out of that invention, so that they can get a monetary value or they can have a right to enjoy. Uh, the benefits of uh, the time that has been put to invent a certain product or a certain way of doing things. So in order for them to be afforded the right to protect that invention or during the making of that invention, they have to make sure that uh, there are three basic things that exist in that invention. And one of them is novelty. Uh, novelty, this means that your, your invention must be different from all previous inventions in one or more of its constituent elements. So this means that it must not have been made public, not even by yourself, before the date of the application. So it has to be different from all other inventions that exist. Okay, the second thing that uh, an inventor should keep in mind with re is with regards to the inventive, inventive step. Uh, this means that your product or process must be inventive, must be an inventive solution. So it cannot be a solution that will be obvious to a manufacturer or to any person in public, okay, or in a certain field uh, that uh, an invention has been, uh, is related to. So an invention is considered to be non-obvious if someone who is skilled in that particular field of the invention would view it as an unexpected or surprise, surprising development. Uh, for instance, take an example of a different attack, uh, uh, instead of different of attach attachment method, for instance, uh, when you want maybe putting in a bembea. So sometimes bembea, we know that, that uh, those viewers in a poor way you may come up with an invention and uh, say that uh, instead of but for a certain person maybe a fundi and bana are related when you mambo ya ya maybe kuchomelea au kutengeneza hayo mini mabembea so it shouldn't be too obvious but for this uh, example that i've made this is too obvious so you have it you have to make sure that uh, it involves your invention involves an inventive step it shouldn't be too obvious to the public or to someone who is uh, in that field um, and the third uh, issue that the inventor should keep in mind is with regards to industrial applicability so this means that uh, uh, it must be possible to actually manufacture or put into practice the new invention. So it means that that invention, though you have uh, invented something and uh, it involves some inventory steps, it is not obvious and everything, but is it uh, can you put it in practice? Can it be used by the public so for them to enjoy it to, to, and to qualify it as an invention? So if an invention is not practical, practicable or cannot be put in practice, then it is not an invention. So uh, generally, the inventor should keep in mind those three things. It has to be new. It should be. It should not be obvious. That is an inventive step, and it should be uh, industrially applicable. Uh, thank you, Arsha. Okay, let us say that I've invented. I've uh, discovered something that falls under those features. It fits all the features. So now it's an invasion. Uh, what steps uh, should a person take to make sure that that invasion is protected? Okay. Um, 
So the steps is to know if you have invented something because IT rights uh, involves uh, IP rights involves a lot of uh, things. They 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 are. They are uh, they, they, they are divided into many things. You can uh, have an uh, intellectual property right when it comes to patents. You can have an intellectual property right. It can be a trademark. Or you can have an intellectual property uh, right when it can be a utility model or it can be an industrial design. So the first thing before you want to protect your invention or something, you have to make sure that it qualifies, uh, it, it, it adheres to, or it, is, it contains those three steps that I've made, or three qualifications. But also you should... Uh, in order to protect it, if it is a patent, there are different ways you can protect a patent. So if it is a trademark, there are different ways you can protect a trademark. Okay, if it is an industrial uh, design or utility model, there are different ways. So for instance, when it comes to patents and invention, it is obviously a patent that it has all the qualifications uh, for it to be protected. The first step is to make sure that you make a formal application for instance, if you want your patent to be protected in Tanzania mainland, then you have to apply formally by filling up the appropriate forms, and you have to explain that invention in the proper document clearly with uh, uh, if there's any uh, drawings, it has to be illustrated. And that illustration has to contain uh, all those things that uh, I've said before, that with regards that uh, you have to show that it is new, it does not exist in the public, it is not obvious, and it should it is applicable industrially. So when you make an application uh, to the registrar of companies, uh, they, w they, will, uh, they will assess your application. So if the patent has, uh, has uh, qualified to be protected, then it will be advertised and uh, it will be issued a registration certificate accordingly. But when, you, uh, when it comes to protecting your uh, patent or your invention, it depends on the jurisdiction that you want your patent to be protected to. Because sometimes uh, these IP rights or IP laws are usually are usually uh, territorial. So you might protect your patent or invention here in Tanzania mainland, but it, it does not uh, acquire protection in Zanzibar. Or maybe you want a wider coverage all over Africa. So you might even think about something else. Maybe you want to, to cover uh, your protection uh, in African countries or all over the world. So you might be able, you should be able to apply uh, to the uh, appropriate forum to get uh, the patent or invention to be registered. All right, uh, that is very helpful. Okay, so maybe I may, uh, I want to ask about trade uh, trade secrets. What's the role of trade secrets in this? Okay, so trade secrets. These are intellectual property rights on confidential information, which may be sold or licensed. So in general, to qualify as a trade secret, the information must be uh, commercially valuable because it is a secret. So, and it should not be known to, it should be known to a limited group of people when maybe, when maybe it might be a way of doing business, maybe it might be some data or financial data that uh, the company holds. It might be the way maybe the uh, market or some competitive or something, some information which might uh, have a quality of competitive edge, which if it falls under the, in the public domain, it, may, it, it, uh, it might cost the company. So for trade secrets, usually Usually in Tanzania, there's no uh, specificity in the laws with regards to trade secrets. But these uh, trade secrets can be protected by way, maybe of uh, uh, protecting way by way of contract. You can sign a contract, or you can sign a confidentiality agreement, uh, maybe between the company and the employees. When they break or they violate uh, the confidentiality agreement, or when they violate that contract, it means that they have violated the contract, and because they have spilled the trade secrets of that company. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Asha. So now I'll we'll move to Zef. Zef, are you there? Zef, we can't hear you. Zef, are you there? AK, can you hear Zef? No, Hafsa. Maybe we can try to reach out to him separately. Pengine yuko mbali kidogo na simu yake. No, he has unmuted uh, his microphone. Zef, can you hear me? Yep. 
I think you are you are breaking up. We can't hear you. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear. Oh, okay, good. Uh, so, Zayf, uh, it has been discussed many times that organi organization responsible for protection of IP in Tanzania, um, they are not very soft when it comes to registration of these um, discoveries and everything. And uh, some of the people are arguing that they have to soften the, the patent protection rules there. Yeah? in order to encourage creativity in Tanzania because most of the, these people who um, discovering who are discovering uh, different technologies or you know some other means of uh, uh, solving uh, challenges in the society they don't know much about patents this and that this is our area as, as uh, lawyers so People are arguing they should uh, soften the process so that we can encourage creativity and more people um, can be encouraged to discover and all that. Uh, what is your view on that one? Uh, Kwanza, I'll, I'll start by introducing myself. Naitwa Zefania Liamuya. I'm working with the Copyright Society of Tanzania as a legal officer. Lakini hapa nita kwa natuwa mawazo yangu na siyo ya taasisi kwa mana kwa mba siyo ya kosota. Kwa sabu nita kwa nazungumzia vitu ambayo yoni nje ya kosota. So, thank you Afsa kwa Afsa Lizuri. Mimi my take into that ni kweli kwa mba nona kuna haja ya kusoften hizi, hizi, hizi kanuni yao, hizi, hizi, hizi regulations ya mazo zipo kwa sababu. So, so far nona kama zina wabana sana wawawawa wabunduzi na wafumbusi aa uh, maeneo mbalimbali kwanza na kwanza naona kila maeneo ambayo linawabana zaidi ni kwenye examinations tunakuwa na muda mrefu sana wa kazi za watu kuwa examined na mamlaka zinazohusika au taasisi zinazohusika na hii inatokana na changamoto nafikiri ni changamoto ya examiners kutokuwa wengi lakini pia examiners ku wa field usika kutokuwebo kwa fano tukiuzungumzia kunduzi na kukukia kunduzi zaina mbalimbali asa nchi zizuendelea wa maineo ya liendelea wa nakuta wa na examiners katika kila profession mwepokea labda issue ni ya software engineering kwa unajua kabisa mtapeleka kwa software engineer mbe ni examiner dani ya tasisi ata ikagua kazi kama ina qualify ya OVP so my take on that ni kwa mba there is a need ya kusofte ni easy regulations ziwe kidogo laini na siwe ngumu ili kuwafutia wengi waweze kufika okay that's uh, thank you zef so the other thing the other question okay uh, so we know that uh, most of these um, technologies and uh, things of invasion and innovation are particularly designed to resolve a certain challenge or a problem or an issue in a society in a certain environment so we know that uh, a challenge that is facing maybe some jimbo in china is not the challenge that uh, as the Resam is facing or as the doma and so on and so forth so uh, why is our government not encouraging invasion and those discoveries within the country, knowing that they are designed to resolve our uh, issues and problems, and instead uh, more people are encouraged to, um, to uh, transfer the technology to work in our environment, the technology that has been designed to work in other in other environments, um, taking for example uh, most of websites that are, um, uh, I mean the the applications in our uh, government institutions, uh, most of them have been uh, transferred here to Tanzania. Uh, there are very few uh, Tanzanians who have been engaged to design uh, these um, applications and uh, websites uh, of these institutions here in Tanzania for Tanzanians. So what is your view and what is your comment or contribution on that? Thank you, Asa. 
uh, reply hivi kwamba kwa muda mrefu IP uh, Tanzania uh, IP ilikuwa kama imesahaulika na ndio maana unakuta sasa sasa hivi watu tunashukuru kwamba kuna vitu vingi kwenye IP vinatakiwa kufanyika na kwa mfano unakuta wagunduzi wengi wa kwa wakati tuliona kuna mtu amegundua gari kule Kigoma wakaenda akahojiwa na ile gari ile kwa public lakini mtu yule na utali gari hata alikuwa alijasajiliwa na wakati anaongea dadasha ameeleza kwamba hautaki disclose kabla hujapata hujapata uh, protection kwa kikubwa kwanza ambacho nakiona na challenge ile kwa kwanza hapa ni elimu lakini pia ni IP kwa tumeiacha nyuma na hilo likapelekea sasa wagunduzi wetu sisi wenyewe pia naona kwamba hatuamini uh, wagunduzi wetu kwa hiyo tunaamini sana uh, teknolojia kutoka nje kwa hiyo tunaona kama teknolojia ya nje ni bora kuliko hiyo kwetu na umeeleza vizuri kwamba sisi ndio tunajua matatizo yetu kwa sisi tunaweza tukatengeneza kitu kizuri kwa sababu lengo ni kusolve yale matatizo tulionayo na tuna vijana wazuri tuna wagunduzi wazuri mafio ni kwa hiyo my take on this ni kwamba tulijisahau somewhere tukazarau au tukaibusia intellectual property na technology kwa jumla yake lakini sasa hivi nashukuru naona kuna mwamko sio tu serikalini pia private naona uh, kama Sparks so naona uh, kampuni nyingi zinajitahidi sasa kuzunguzia kuzunguzia IP kwa hiyo to me naona mwamko ni mzuri lakini wito wangu sasa ni kwenda zaidi kwenye kwenye view vioni kule kuna kuna madiko mengi kuna ugunduzi mwingi huko lakini haupati protection lakini pia hatuutumii watu tunawaneishia tu kuandika na wanaishia kugundua kwa ajili ya kupata PhD kwa ajili ya kupata masters na kwa ajili ya kupata degree zao na hizo kiamua sasa kushuka kule naamini kabisa tunaweza kuwa na hisi a uh, technology za hapa hapa nyumbani ambazo zitatatua changamoto na zitakuwa nzuri kama ambavyo umeielezea asante Ah uh, asante sana Zef kwa huo mchango wako I think we also, I would also like to impose a challenge at uh, Sahara Sparks and associated organization including NGOs and international NGOs to take a look uh, to siachie tu government peke yake to take a look tufanye u, u nini u chechemuzi siju wana, wanaita ku promote uh, this invasion and innovation from uh, uh, level ya ki, ya kijamii kabisa uh, Sante Zef. so moving to nema Nema you are here right I am Hafsa Okay good uh, first of all congratulations I hear you have created a legal app that allows the users to access uh, legal services uh, through their phone so in a nutshell uh, how was it like to take us through the the process in a nutshell briefly Thank you very much Hafsa and good evening everyone my name is Arnema Magimba. I am an advocate, uh, the managing partner of Extend Corporate Advisory, which is a corporate and intellectual property law firm. I'm also a co-founder and head of legal for Sharia Kiganjani, which is a platform that provides easily accessible and affordable legal services through mobile phones. Now, the journey to creating the platform or the app was a tad bit easy for us. As a team, we had already identified our why and um, what problem our platform was going to resolve. Uh, during the time when we were creating the platform, we had an in-house IT team, so the platform was developed in-house, which made it even easier. However, um, the challenge of creation uh, uh, was faced by, we faced the challenge during registration and protection of our platform. How do we register it or what do we register it as was a, was a common question when we were um, brainstorming around on that and um, as Asha highlighted on the difference of innovation and invention ours was an innovation and although it introduced a new way or process of providing legal services it was not an invention similar solutions were already being used around the world so it was a challenge in uh, deciding how to register it and most especially um, how to protect our platform eventually we resorted to registering a non-profit organization and have Shereki Ganjani as um, one of the solutions that was developed by the organization in efforts to bridge the justice gap in Tanzania. So in a nutshell, that was the, the, the journey to creating the, the platform. Uh, what was, uh, if I may ask, uh, what was the challenge uh, that you were facing so hard that you decided and resolved to also register an NGO for, for, the, for the app to belong to? 
As I mentioned before, we had um, innovate and not invented so this was not uh, a new solution it may have been new in tanzania but uh, again the solution was being used um worldwide now the biggest challenge for us was um fitting our amazing solution within the requirements of protection and registration that are posed by our laws it was not patentable it was not uh, it could not fit under criteria of a trademark but um we eventually secured uh it's the registration of shuriki ganjani's copyrights which includes the platform's um content Oh, okay. Uh, that's good. Uh, what are the challenges that you are still facing right now? Apart from protection, which I've already um, spoken about, penetration and the use of the internet and mobile phones is still relatively low, especially in the rural areas. And as innovative as uh, myself and the co other co-founders of Shiraki Ganjani wanted this platform to be, we are still um, forced from time to time to customize some of our services to enable our target market to access these services. But also another challenge that um, we are still facing is trust. Um, as this is trust from the from the community. Although as we are growing, this is um, dimming down. But initially, it was difficult for people, especially our target market, people in the rural areas, to trust a lawyer who they cannot see physically. But um, over time, the trust has been built for us. I think this would have been easier if um, different institutions, especially government institutions, would aggressively embrace um, people-centered technology. And I think maybe this would. Um, ensure people that uh, these services or these solutions are reliable compared to, are reliable in the same way as the usual processes of getting these services are. Oh, okay. Um, thank you, uh, Neema. So now I'll move to Sunday. Sunday, uh, are you here with us? Sunday, are you close to your mic or here with us? Okay, oh, yes, good. Um, in the yes, uh, Karibu Sana, uh, you can introduce Thanks, yourself yeah. and then Utoambie what uh, the challenges that you have faced. I I hear that you also have an app. You have created an app. What was the what is the challenges that you are facing or was uh, facing during the registration? Did you take the same route as Neema or uh, yeah, take us through the, your journey? All right. Um, so my name is Sander Goodfriend of Gobra. I'm a managing partner of a law firm called ABC Attorneys. We're a corporate and commercial law firm. Uh, but initially, we started out as um, an IP law firm. So, and that was more like a laughing stock for most because when we started out, we were like the only law firm that did IP for like five years. Uh, uh, and then later on, we decided to make other practices. But um, again, we are also uh, members of uh, Taglo and Amani IP, which gives us uh, platforms in Kenya, Uganda, um, Rwanda, Burundi as well. Um, uh, when we started out, I think we were one of the law firms that um, had an application. So we started out with an app. And when we were doing our app, um, the challenges we had was the registration part as well and also trying to integrate that uh, with law and um, knowing that the fact that not most had access to mobile phones, it was a bit tricky. So what we did was, um, at the time, um, we decided to, to do a halt on that. So we halted on that and then um, we, we tried to navigate on other ways of making sure that our platforms would assist our clients. So. Um, we, we developed a uh, software that is cloud-based of which we have access to and our clients only. Um, it's on our website. We named it um, Intellig ABC. It does pretty much everything that we do um, with the normal software in an office. And we have that online. You can access it at home and, and whatnot. But we have developed also other platforms of which there have been a challenge, like um, what the other speakers were saying, even uh, what what uh, Neema and Asha were saying. And as far as um, um, registration is concerned, uh, we have had clients whereby now I'm trying to link this with um, other intangible assets and whatnot and how we, 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 we faced in terms of trying to find in the value in it and trying to monetize out of it. So, um, um, uh, the changes we had were uh, in trying to see how our laws would best assist at first in, when it comes to registration, because that's the most important thing we have to do at first. 
And then when it comes to finding the value in it, because when I'm speaking of intangible assets, trying to, to quantify that or to commercialize that is very tricky, especially in Tanzania. Ambapo, as most know, our laws go new makidog. Angalawa to Uganda, they have what they call the Security of Memorable um, uh, Act, of which in our side uh, 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 it could be recent. It's, it hasn't been there for long, but for us it's been tricky. So that also, I remember even of recent, we had a client whereby we had to even uh, file his trademarks um, uh, to file their trademarks in Tanzania, but to form a company in the U.S., in Delaware, so that we make sure that at least we add value to their, to their IP assets. But um, coming to our laws, you see you have, because um, we, we have dealt with a lot of uh, clients from Bolt, Cheaper Cash, and most fintechs now and whatnot, but when it comes to uh, registering their mobile applications, um, you are you're faced with um, an innovation and an invention. You end up going to Kosota, of which um, they've been very helpful. Now, no, Doreen, are you Papa? But Zephra, are you Papa? But you, yes. They've been very helpful in trying to, to, to as now their platform is even online, so... Um, now that the government is 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 coming on board, we know that is the Mirabaz Tanza Kulipa. I think it was um, starting um, the December, but we know that the government is coming on board. Um, what Tanza could do the value of um, IP, but transforming that and trying to because we have been speaking of um, um, what were the common people to say me, and more among what Tanza in villages. But kuna pia kuna businesses ambazo awajui the value of the intangible assets ambazo anazo. Awajui kumba, kama ulipokuwa nasema ZEF, kumba kukiangalia kwa mfano apart from universities ambazo wana investions nyingi lakini azifiki kokote ambao that's something else. Kuna, kuna companies ambazo, okay, once you do an invention, let's say, because of that doesn't reflect in your balance sheets. It can only do that once you do, like, let's say, uh, an assignment or you license it. So you, when you patent that, uh, when you license your patent, then that intangible asset in a corner, in a corner part of value. So, so most don't understand or they don't know you can use that uh, to add value to your assets. So uh, in far as challenges, it ends your pattern here when you are starting out. Adi Kabidi Kunakat, we had to halt on that. Now we are we are building something even bigger. You are you come to see it, I think, come uh, February, but it's bigger than, than what we had uh, planned to do before. So we are we are we are we are, we are a technology based law firm. We are trying to move everything there because we know Kombapoli, the robots are coming and whatnot. But we've had challenges of which we have overcome. And we think Kama Shiriaza Kosotos may be Ningi, Naising is Takuja. Our patent law is very old. Our uh, trademark laws, peers, and is a bit of a river. So our laws have been uh, uh, have been a problem, and we faced that. But we're trying to overcome So that's that's my my fifty cents. Oh, uh, thank you, Sunday, and I wish you good luck uh, in your journey to create a more bigger based uh, technology firm. Uh, so ni me pandisha, Mr. Jumanne. Uh, Mr. Jumanne is one of the co-founder of uh, Venture Sahara and also Spark Sahara. Nita Mkaribisha Zungumze Mawil Matatu with regard to our session today. And atuambie kusiana na hizo challenges ambazo amezisikia wao kama Spark Sahara with all their uh, expertise and experience in the market and also have um, a bigger and wider network kama ameshawahi kusikia vitu kama hivyo na ni mchango gani ambao wao wanaweza kutoa pamoja na kuongelea uh, Spark Sahara kwa ujumla so uh, Jumane you are welcome and on a, uh, sorry uh before you speak and i also would like to invite audiences kupandisha mikono kama kutakuwa kuna mtu anaswali the time is now karibu you uh, we can uh, thank you so much absa i will be very very short leo ni siku wa wanasheria so wengine tunajifunza uh yeah so sasa uh, my name is Jumanne Mtambalike, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sahara Ventures. First of all, I'm going to thank you for the breakthrough attorneys, and I'm going to 
na laws 101 uh, hii session kiukweli kabisa ni ni, ni, ni ni very informative session very educative na uh, kwa mbunifu wa kawaida kuipata huduma ingekuwa ni very expensive kwake kwa na naamini kabisa wabunifu na watu wa teknolojia ambao wanasikiliza hapa wamejifunza vitu vikubwa mimi nilikuwa nachukua notes kata silangu zinaenda kata sila tatu sasa hivi uh, na shukrani sana insight ambazo zimetolewa uh, Sahara Ventures kama kampuni uh, so one of our company ambayo ni Sahara Sparks kama aliyosema uh, business partner wangu bwana Osaje tuna create platform ya easy conversation kwa sababu ya futuristic company and we believe in the future and uh, and the future is intangible future is intellectual property kwa hiyo hivi ni vitu ambavyo dunia ndio inakoelekea na kiukweli kabisa um, kuna some interesting news ambazo nimesikia kwa mfano uh, last year kuna kijana wa Tanzania Andon Mendes aliweza ku raise 25 million USD uh, kwa kuuza tu Uh, the technology behind na writers uko nazo na hiyo technology ya copper gas. Kwa hiyo uh, opportunities zipo. Easy discussion we need to have more of them. Ukizungumza na Andrew mwenyewe kwa sababu is a friend to me. Changamoto ambazo alikuwa anakumbana nazo za kisheria, ofisi ambayo alikuwa anapita kwa ajili ya kuomba masuala ya protection na kuelewa hivi vitu. Kwa kweli elimu haipo. Uh, darasa kwa dadaasha ni darasa kubwa sana na sana likaonekana ni dogo kwa sababu nyote ni mashiria lakini huku mtaani ni information na ni knowledge ambayo kweli wabunifu na watu wa teknolojia wanahitaji kwa inabidi tuendelee kushirikiana, kushirikiana zaidi kuangalia namna gani we can actually uh, create platform kama hizi za watu kujifunza na hizo huduma kutolewa kwa upande wa Sahara kitu gani tuna tunakifanya kwanza tuna push hizi hizi agenda nimekuwa nikifanya hii mjadala at personal level na na Harry kuangalia namna gani tunaweza tukaluki into intangible asset uh, issues za uh, innovation pamoja na research commercialization uh, masuala ya patenting kwenye wa local academic and research institution kwa kweli tuko nyuma research zinafanyika lakini the gap between kinachofanyika shuleni na kinachokuja kwenye industry ni kidogo sana kwa hiyo kuna opportunity hapo kwa kusolve tatizo lakini kwa kutengeneza new businesses kwa tunafanya hivyo tunashirikiana na vyuo kwenye hii wiki ya future imagine juma nne tulikuwa tunashirikiana na chocha tumaini university to publish some academic papers around the area kwa hizo ni baadhi ya effort ambazo uh, sahara inafanya lakini kingine tunategemea kuendelea kufanya hizi insight papers na hata information tuzozipata hapa tunaomba kuna watu tutawafuata kwa ajili ya kuuliza maswali zaidi kama case study uh, so the work ambayo tutakuwa tunafanya na breaks kwa toni na kuna wengine tutawafuatilia kwa ajili ya kushare some surveys gather some insight kwa sababu kiukweli kabisa kwenye body of knowledge ya nyumbani hapa hakuna information ya kutosha ya haya mambo ya intangible asset na IP issues and it's very difficult to learn hivi vitu kwa mtu ambaye anataka kuelewa kwa context ya nyumbani kwa that being said i like to commend all those who have been taking part Uh, ku organize na ku set up kitu nashukuru uh, partners wetu kwa kuwa flexible out of your very busy schedule na watu ambao umetoa muda wao usiku kuzungumza uh, continue to follow Sahara Sparks continue to follow Breaks with Tonys continue to to follow laws of Tanzania 101 na wazungumzaji wote tuendelee kujifunza pamoja have a good evening and uh, have a blessed week na uh, tunawaalika events za Sahara zina zina zinaendelea keep following on our social media pages there's a lot of interesting sessions coming na kwa na sheria na waalika pia Ijumaa hii kutakuwa kuna market place ambapo unifu watakuwa na present uh, startup zao mnaweza mkapata watu wa kwali present ambao baadaye wata raise millions of money and then you have a portion of it basi karibuni sana na have a good evening asante <laughs> sana All right. Uh thank you very much uh Yumanne. Uh Harry, you wanted to say something. You wanted to contribute. Uh the time is now. Uh also nina karibisha audience kama kuna mtu yeyote mwenye swali anaweza kaanyosha mkono, akapanda juu, tutampandisha aje kuuliza swali au ku contribute au kama ana any sort of concern. Um here
Mary, we can't hear you. Uh, it's here. Yes. Okay. Um, what I was saying is, I wanted to add on a little bit on the aspect of intangible assets in general, and uh, wanted to call everyone in this room and elsewhere that um, we have to take note that the world in general is moving from a tangible rich economy into intangible uh, economy in general. And those countries that are amenable and quick to uh, to adopt intangible economy would uh, tend to benefit and uh, uh, create more revenue after uh, what wow kuliko zile countries ambazo ziko slower our laggard when it comes to adopt and uh, facilitate uh, an economy that fosters uh, intangible economy so Looking at uh, where we are right now, we are speaking, we are hearing a lot of words around, we're talking about blockchain, etc., etc. So now we need to be a country or people that are actually tapping in on these, these technological advancements so as to uh, uh, create and uh, facilitate our ability to make money. So um, if uh, you are to uh, generate money in this economy or the global economy, you have to be tech savvy um if you are a website uh, creator you you can create it a anywhere you are so more and more things tend to be more scalable and uh, more profitable if they are somewhat attached to a digital uh, tech uh, or a platform or economy um I would suggest for those inventors, innovators that are in here that Juman has spoken about, to actually take a reading of several books or aspects that make you uh, understand what is a digital economy. Um, uh, one eye-opening book that I've read and I would recommend for everybody, uh, those readers of us, um, is uh, the um, rise of, uh, it's called Capitalism Without Capital. It's by... Um, um, the subtitle says the rise of um, intangible economy. It's written by Stian Westlake and Jonathan Haskell. Now, they, they explain what are intangible, and some of them we have not spoken about. For example, research and development. In the process of you inventing, you will do something like research and development that uh, Yumane has spoken. It in itself is an intangible asset so how do you scale it how do you sell how do you protect it so now you come to those answers that asha and uh, zef have spoken about so i'm calling for everyone to look into the general picture of what intangible economy is and from it we will get intangible assets as a subset and from that all of us we can benefit from thank you Asha. Uh, thank you, Harry. Uh, and uh, okay, I see a hand here. Uh, welcome. Okay, wakati na endelea kumpandisha, I think ni mkuki, aje kuuliza swali lake or contribute. Um, I was asked by Ezekiel, uh, who will also participate in Spark Sahara tomorrow. I'm not sure what time. It's the session, but Ezekiel will also um, have a session here at Clubhouse. He will be speaking at uh, Spark Sahara. Naomba mumfolo na muzuri epia. Asante ni sana. Bari za jio ni ote. Na ito wa Mkuki. Na by profession, I'm a publisher. Mkuki na yota publishers. Nilikuwa na comment. Au pengine ni challenge. Uh, kwa sababu uh, hii ni area ambayo kwa kweli kwetu wengi ni mpya na kama Jumanne alivyosema uh, watu wamekaa na mini wengi katika chumba hichi tunachukua notes um, kutokana na vitu ambavyo vinatugusa kwenye area zetu lakini maybe the challenge or the call niliyokuwa nataka kuweka hapa kwenye meza ni kwamba ningewaomba mtu andikie vitabu au kitabu at the very least a primer uh, on, on you know touching on these issues intellectual property intangible assets na, na pengine kugusia sekta mbalimbali ambazo ni ki na ni mpya na ndio zenye mapungufu mengi kwa sababu hakuna maandiko ya kutosha 
Um, I think it's it's often extremely difficult uh, ku, 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 kupata taarifa au kujua ufanye nini ipasavyo. Kwa hiyo inabidi labda kama unajua mtu mpigie simu au pengine um, yani ku, kwa kuunga unga tuseme. So there's no uh, easy reference uh, for a lot of people angalau mahali wanapoweza kuanzia. So my call to the professionals in this room uh, ni, ni kwamba, and, and this is a call from a publisher you know um, who's looking for manuscripts for books in this area uh, tungefurai sana tungeweza kupata muswada a manuscript uh, covering these areas which could have been used uh, either kufundishia higher education uh, or at least basi something that a uh, general public could be able to use um kuji, kujiweka mahali fulani ya uh, kuwa informed nadhani ingetusaidia sana uh, it could be a collection of papers uh, covering different areas by different obviously an edited volume by different authors um au, 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 au single author whatever it doesn't matter lakini nimeona nichukue fursa hii ku to to call on 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 us to to put together an intellectual effort ambayo nadhani itakwenda ku, ku, kujaza hii gap kwa sababu ni vigumu sana mtu kufanya research to all over the internet na na yani kwa, kwa, kwa Tanzania ni ngumu sana ku, 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 kujua una, 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 unapataje information ambazo uh, ziko sahihi na zinaweza zikakuongoza kwa kiasi fulani so i just wanted to to just uh, kuwashukuru kwa session nzuri sana ambayo tunajifunza vitu vingi lakini also at the same time uh, to put forth a challenge uh, so that we can begin to build a body of knowledge you know um, which then we can all sort of uh, benefit from yeah uh, sante uh, sante sana mkuki jamani this is a very important call wanasema uh, put your mouth where the money is so the money is at mkuki the publisher anawalika um mpeleke hivyo vitabu muweze kufanya mashirikiano and then at the end of the day itakuwa ume, umesaidia sana kuelimisha hii jamii yetu ya Tanzania because we don't have ip books uh, ambazo tunazo ziko originated hapa Tanzania na we are here uh, talking about technology and ips so this is uh, an important to call and ni kitu ambayo um, people are supposed to go and dissect uh, to the speakers and also the audiences okay so i saw uh, usaje flashing uh, usaje karibu yes yes okay okay yeah kablo ya mrusu usaje naona pia noel ame flash just wanted to add a point a uh, point ile ya uh, rumi aizeke okesho which they will be having a corporate event here at Sahara Spark itakuwa ni saa mbili kamili Tanzania time na wanafanyia kwenye chumba cha mwanzo Tanzania so please follow our brother Ezekiel and participate what to sikose and uh, let's get the conversation going usaje karibu thank you so much uh, Hafsa and and AK i just have a food for thought question to my fellow lawyers because i'm also a lawyer <coughs> Uh, from the theme of this year Sahara Sparks uh, the future imagined we've been talking about the trend the new trending technologies uh, artificial intelligence um, blockchain and cryptocurrency now my food for thought question do we really have the laws and regulation in place to support these new technologies now if the answer to this question is no <laughs> now it's it's our call to to push for the to push for the government to to have this uh, these laws and regulation to support these new, te new new technologies because if we have these new technologies uh and 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 again they are barred by the current existing laws and regulations we cannot even enjoy these new technologies that is what i just wanted to pause thank you uh, that's a very good question and um later on in some karibisha zefa ajibu lakini kwa sasa hivi nitamkaribisha na wao aseme swali lake au contribution and then tamkaribisha Tila and Jacqueline no uh, asante hasa uh, mimi sina swali wala mchango lakini nilidhani ni muda ule wa invitation umefika is uh, the sponsors Sahara Sparks and Breakthrough Attorneys allow me to use this opportunity 
to basically invite everyone who's here. As I believe this is a closed group and everyone has some interest in legal tech. We've been building a solution. Um, I think you can see on Tino's um, uh, um, EP, my Wakili. It's, it's, it's a product that we've been building for over four or five years now. And we will be launching it sometime in November, dates to be confirmed. Um, it's a solution that seeks to address the challenges we've been discussing on legal tech and the legal profession and legal service delivery in the country. Uh, it's both a USSD a web and an app um, solution that we would like to have a closed uh, test group. So if anyone is interested, I'll kindly request you to DM me your email addresses or phone numbers, and then I'll send you an invite uh, for, for that. Asante ni sana wadhamin. And sorry, kama ni meka nyaga waya. Hakuna shida, na nimesha kutumia email yangu. I am that fast. Noel. Uh, that's good news, and I think um, uh, that's the purpose here. Ya, ya Spark Sahara, uh, kufanya uh, his event uh, kila mwaka. So ongera sana. So um, now I would uh, like to welcome Tila. Tila Karibu, if you have any contribution or question. Yes, Hasa. Thank you very much. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Tila. Well, my name is Anistila Bahati. Um, I'm a senior associate with Bricks Maratonis. Um, Asante ni sana panelists. This has been very educative. Nina swali tu moja directed to my fellow wakilis. Um, ninge ninge pena kuskia maoni yenu. Um, is to what you would recommend in a situation where mtu ana allege kwamba haki yake ama rather uh, well ha, their property has been infringed the intellectual property rights have been infringed ningependa kusikia recommendations kutoka kwenu nyie mawakili ambao mna practice kwenye hii area uh, where how would you like would you advise the best way to go about uh, challenging such infringement? Would you advise Kwamba the best way to go about it ni through normal procedure ya kama ama mgewa shahuri kupitia office ya registrar wa trademarks, brella and all of that. Kutokana na experience zenu labda. That is all asante. Oh, uh, that's a very nice question. Na nita redirect kwa Sande. Lakini uh, kaba Sande na Zef hawajajibu wa maswali mawili, uh, I think nitataka kumkaribisha pia Jacqueline. Uh, ulize swali lake na then hapo ndio itakuwa mwisho wa maswali kwa siku ya leo. Karibu Jacqueline. Uh, thank you Hafsa. Hi everyone. Um Jacqueline Kapinga. I'm a senior associate from Rex Atonis. Um, uh, mine was not a question, it was rather just a, a request. Um, I think during the um, the presentation, I think Harry had mentioned a book, uh, something capitalism or something. So I would like, if he may, just to repeat the title again so that I catch it and uh, I would like to read it. So uh, yeah that is all and also I would also like to thank every speaker um for the very very thoughtful um uh, presentation for me it was um, I learned a lot today thank you Oh, uh, thank you uh, to Jacqueline. Uh, that is very thoughtful. Uh, so, uh, to answer, uh, Harry Karibu, remind us about the book. You remind us now, and then before uh, closing this uh, session, we'll also remind us again. So, remind us about the book. Uh, thank you. Uh, I've tried, I've put the book cover as my profile picture. So it's easier for everyone to just check my profile and uh, they can see there. It's called Capitalism Without Capital, The Rise of Intangible Economy by those two gentlemen. Yes, I think Jacqueline can see that and everybody else. So, yeah, yeah. If, if you can't see that, yeah, just refresh the, the app and you will see it. 
Okay, so uh, thank you, Harry. Uh, now need some Karibisha Zef. Zef. Uh, can you please uh, respond to the the question from Usaje? Mm, asante. Uh, na shukuru sana wakili Usaje kwa swali zuri. So far, sheria za Tanzania bado kama alivyozungumza ndugu yangu Sande nyingi ni za zamani. Na tukizungumzia masuala ya AI, artificial intelligence, duniani sasa hivi kuna hot debate kuangalia kwamba zinalindwa na sheria gani so, tunasema kwamba intellectual property zinatakiwa zitokane na ubunifu ubunifu wa mtu sasa tunapenda kwenye kitu tunaita AI kwa hiyo duniani sasa kuna hot debate na sisi tuko na tuko muongozo utakaotoka lakini so far sheria bado ni za zamani ndio tunapambana kusibadilisha badilisha at least ziendane ziendane na mazingira ya sasa so kujibu tu shukrani ni kwamba hakuna yani haijaguswa kwenye sheria za sasa hivi and then to, we are working on it hasa kwa upande wa copyright pale ambapo mimi ndo nafanyia kazi tunajitahidi sana kuz update update zendaye na mazingira ya sasa so, sababu sheria ambayo tunayo sasa ni ya mwaka 1999 na ukiangalia ile sheria ni kwamba tume yani inalandana sana na sheria ya zamani ya Malawi nisemeni kama tuli copy and paste wazetu Malawi tayari wameshabadilisha sheria yao mwaka 2018 so we are working on it at least yendane na mazingira ya sasa alafu la pili nafikiri sande atajibu lakini niligusia sababu naweza nisipate nafasi tena ya kuligusia ni kwamba mimi ushauri wangu mara nyingi huwa nashauri kwamba la kwanza kama una, unaangalia nature infringement ambayo waliuliza Tila unaangalia nature infringement na je imepumiza kiasi gani kwa mfano sisi kwenye masuala ya copyright kuna wewe tunaamua kwamba hii issue unamshauri mtu kwamba iende kwenye criminal case kuna wengine tunawashauri inakuwa ni civil lakini duniani kote wanashauri kwa mfano kwenye issues za patent au issues za technology unapoona infringement imefanyika then the best way mimi na weona na leo fundisho kwamba you sit down with the infringer kama yuko willing and then unaangalia ile market base yake kama yuko ana market base kubwa then the best way ni wewe na yeye kukaa na strike a deal ambayo utatumia utatumia ile soko lake kwa hiyo wanasema we don't kill parents or we don't kill our infringers but we turn them into partners kwa sababu unakuta yeye ye, wewe huna soko una technology yule infringer ame infringe kwa sababu yeye ana soko kwa hiyo you work on it or go, i mean you work with him or her rather than kwenda mahakamani na nini na nini na shukuru wewe mchango wako kwa sasa all right. Uh, th uh, thank you, Zef. Um, Chanko Mzuri, uh, we also would like to call upon the government and people who has uh, who have enough influence to influence these sheria zibadilike. It's about time we cannot sit here discuss about technological development, innovation, uh, encouraging and promoting uh, creativity in innovation in the country while at the same time uh, sheria zetu na policies has it reflect hivyo vitu uh, okay uh, after saying that uh, sunday karibu will respond to the question that uh, tila has imposed to All right uh, i'll be very brief uh, so because uh, um zef has spoken most of um what i want to say especially on the part that um in, in when it comes to infringement it's best to first sit down and then sabu tunaongea infringement za ina nyingi na sakana kaka kufano ni kama ni corporate infringement of which normally you advise our clients na mwa nyingi naenda kosota tunapeleka mara ni kwa watu tu kama ni member ni wa kosota you start from there and then they'll try to 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 mediate and if it it goes sour or not then we go to court hapo ndo wakuja kwamba unakuta kwamba the best remedy now would be to go to court after and then we have uh, watu kama AFCC ambao wao um, ni in administrative enforcement na sheria ile ya fair commission act ya mwaka 2022 na realize that yeah, inawapa inawapa nguvu
Kwa hiyo nakuta hata hivi ukimbia mahakamani remedies zipo kuanzia injunction um, damages na monetary compensation kupata criminal prosecution pia kwa faru kupitia cyber crimes act kuna fines zipo kuna forfeiture za kufanyika na distractions so i would say the best way would be to first sit down try and see if you can negotiate out of it and then you might get money and then you can save your time sababu nakumbuka hata kuna issue tulikuja kusota kuanzia ile mpaka um, ija kufika na Walt Disney ile kina nani hapa pia kina Chameleon wapi na nyingi tu nyingine once you start mkianza kuongea inakuwa easy au kiwaandikia barua ya ya season desist inaanzia hapo people come to table and then naona kama kuna information inaweza kusort how and what not and get out of it baadaye kishindikana then you can kimbia court ambayo is the best room na kwenda kwa stop basi nena infringement na mengine yale kusindiswa upate haki yako that's it okay uh thank you uh sunday Uh, that was also uh, very helpful also i see okay Harry is not here usaje uh, would you like to give us a closing statement kabla hatujafunga chumba as we all know to me pita tayari kama dakika 12 we were supposed to uh, close this session at uh, 8:30 so karibu Yes, uh thank you so much. Um first of all I would like to appreciate the time lakini na contribution na sharing of knowledge from all the all the members from the panel na wote waliozungumza waliotenga muda wao kushirikiana pamoja na sisi. To be honest, uh conversation around uh legal tech and uh, IP IP in related issues ni pana sana. Na bado naona kuna haja ya ku extend these conversations. Kwa hiyo leo tumeanza na I'm glad kwamba tumeanza na we from Sahara Ventures will be more than happy to participate and see how we can push further this agenda na kuhakikisha kwamba uh, the knowledge inawafikia hasa walengo ambao ni innovators. Lakini pia eh, tufikie basi mahali na ambapo pia ta serikali itaweza kuona na kutusaidia especially katika when it comes to laws and regulations na kwa kwa, kwa uzoefu ambao tuko nao we started talking about fourth industrial revolution sometimes back in 2017 tumepiga piga kelele at least kuanzia mwaka jana na mwaka huu serikali imeanza kutuelewa na wanaanza kuzungumza lugha yetu we started talking we started us from sahara ventures we started talking about uh, and the definition of and and the challenges facing startups from 20 za alizungumza jambo wakati anazungumza na vijana kuhusiana na startups kwa hiyo hata serikali wameanza kutambua uwepo wa startups na vitu vingine kama hivyo so we 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 believe these conversations zina spark uh, zina, uh, this this conversation ambazo tunazi spark zinakwenda mbali na zitatusaidia hata kwa watu ambao ni watunzi wa sera na watunzi wa sheria kuweza kutuwekea mazingira rafiki hata tunapofikia ku embrace the new technologies ili ziweze kutusaidia idea. Sasa on behalf of Sahara Ventures na washukuru sana. Thank you so much our partners Breakthrough Attorneys and uh, Tanzania Laws One uh, Laws of Tanzania 101 for taking part uh, uh, in this uh, 2021 Sahara Sparks platform kwa kushirikiana pamoja na sisi katika kuendesha uh, forum hii ya leo. And to be honest hata audience wengine watakubaliana na mimi kwamba the session has been very well informative and it has been a very wonderful session again thank you so much both moderators for wonderfully moderating this session having said so naomba nirudishe kwako bihafsa thank you so much Ah uh, asante sana usaje uh, mimi pia ningependa kushukuru sana uh, audience wetu ambao wa, wanahudhuria katika hizi sessions ambazo watu nazi hold uh, siku ya Tuesday but today because it was a special session we had to hold this session uh, today uh, karibuni naomba mfollow laws of Tanzania 101 there is um, small 
Okay, uh, here is blinking. Uh, Harry, let me finish and then I'll, I'll give the mic to you. Um, Laws of Tanzania 101, there is a, a small house there, Kagreen. Please uh, follow our club, Tukio Tuna Form Easy Sessions. Utakuwa unapata notification. Follow us also on Twitter and LinkedIn and also on Instagram. We are also trying to protect our name here. <laughs> uh, we are walking the, the talk. Uh, so, kaba hatujafunga Asante sana Hafsa. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity on behalf of Breakthrough Attorneys to uh, thank everybody that has participated and again um, hand, uh, shaking hands with us in this uh, session. Kukweli mekua so informative. I'm getting very good feedback um, elsewhere, kusiana na session. Uh, the good thing about it ni kwamba to record session, so it can also be available katika hizo platform ambazo hafsa kasema. Na finally, mm -hmm. I just want to um, tell um, Cookie that uh, the challenge the challenge has been accepted, taken, and uh, tutakuwa in touch. Na um, inshallah na dhani, very soon we will have that book that uh, you are talking about. Thank you. Harry, yeah, that, uh, that's very promising. So I see a hand uh, from Cecilia, but uh, with Cecilia, we are very sorry we are closing this room. But you can back channel me your, your contribution or your uh, question, and I will send uh, a question directly to the speakers. If it's a contribution, we will work on it. Uh, so, Santeni Sana. And without further ado, I will close uh, this room in, okay, uh, one, two, three, bye-bye.